my favorite part of this shot is the sky even though we see progressively less of it as I zoom in on myself when I see the shot I remember that day I remember summer my favorite part is the sky and the clouds Look at the clouds. I think about being a bird. It must be... How do you be a bird? How, how do you... Birds are so aerodynamic and so perfect. enjoy doing sports that allow me to experience movement that I don't normally get to experience just on my own. By movement that I experience on my own, I mean walking, running, sitting, or dancing. Being on wheels helps me to roll around and being on the pole helps me to spin around. Maybe my equipment turns me into a cyborg, like I have extra tools, like birds have wings and I have wheels, or birds have I don't know, beaks, and I have a pole. Yeah, my equipment is an extension of my body. I also like things like trampolining because it makes me feel like I'm flying. My most recent hobby is Destiny learning how to skip rope. And well, there I really feel like I'm the really rope can become an extension of my body if I would practice hard and enough. Fears and I still I need to practice doing sports. I actually have like a, a million hours more before I can get that feeling. Air. Even though I'm big, I'm super light and that makes it easy for me to move around. I think there's a connection between dinosaurs and birds. <clears throat> aren't, aren't birds aren't, aren't birds the most related animals today to dinosaurs? Yeah. How long How long would it take before so I thought one given how practices light enough I am, to be able to fly? I should be able to do lots of virtuosic stuff but it still takes work, more work than I expected. There are, there are limits to human movement because humans don't have wings and that's where equipment comes in. I've been practicing on the pole for a long there is time, a story behind the dinosaur triptych. I started being a bit At more first, consistent I about wanted seven to years make ago. a triptych and, and ago, I voice super three different dinosaur again. characters. <clears throat> I wanted to make some kind of story out of it. It was many months ago I tried this. I arranged a triptych and then I tried to give voice to each of the three dinosaurs. I tried to edit them together, but it just didn't work because I practice because it's fun, and I, if it's not fun, then I I'm don't not very want experienced to with. I don't really like performing making this kind of material. I'm more of a performance maker. It's difficult, and it's I guess much better to perform things that are very easy. Not having scripted when I do anything beforehand, home, which I do from time to time, and just videoing myself on the pole and then trying to combine three pieces of and footage into a story. It just didn't work because 
um, it didn't make sense. Stuff, and I tried so to do that it was in the an original context that allows intention me behind the to triptych. Pull in a way that is not the standard virtuosic pull that you see in the biggest mainstream competitions and stuff. Maybe what I want to say is I'm not a very practiced triptych maker or story writer and I'm much more practiced with just performing just turning up and performing and I think that gives me some kind of blind faith that I can perform my way through anything I can make the video first and then perform myself speaking into a mic with three different dinosaur I voices. never became a competition pole dancer, um, yes, but I could perform I it, performed but in I wasn't my own way. happy with the I result. I think I avoid going to pole dance competitions <coughs> because when I was in my early teens, um, I spent a few years going to figure skating I have competitions. Two After dinosaur those experiences, suits right now. I guess I, I just one. decided I don't need um, to compete anymore. The first one I had. <laughs> I'm too short for seeing out of the window in the suit so often I can't see very well when I'm inside the dinosaur suit and what I do to compensate for it is to bite down on the costume so there's a lot of saliva actually inside the suit and yeah I bite down on the suit to bring it a bit lower so that I can see through the window and then I run I around or go upside one down or theater spin. show where I said my line and then my co-actor said his line and then I said another and line and then I run around and then or go upside happened. down or my spin. line went something like haha it's such a funny joke or and something then I run around but then I felt like the joke was spin. falling flat and nobody and in the I audience was laughing so I felt like it was stupid to insist that it was a really funny joke when it wasn't so then i said something ad hoc like i didn't plan it i just said actually it's not funny look no one's laughing and my co-actor told me afterwards to please never do that again because it totally threw him off because i wasn't following the script anymore and he didn't like that and i keep biting so biting is one part of the choreography that you don't see but I have to do it, otherwise I cannot see. I'm pretty inconsistent with the biting. Sometimes I'm more devoted to it and more stubborn. Other times I just stop biting because it's actually quite hard to keep biting and feel like your saliva is coming out of your mouth while you're also trying to do some tricks on the pole. So sometimes I just choose to allow myself not to see. So I go between not seeing and drooling all over my face. You know, I think there's something worth practicing with this wheel and pole thing because I think it's quite nice to skate into a spin but I don't practice enough. Like, I haven't actually put a lot of energy into figuring out how to combine the so skates with the pole. When we work with spirits, she insists that Instead of saying the line as it is, she should be allowed to just convey the meaning of the line. And I was like super annoyed by this because I actually want her to say the line so that I know when her line has ended because like I know what the last word of her line is. So when I know her line has ended, I can speak. Right now what I'm showing is basically a gimmick. It's like a fancy costume which is very attention drawing and pull and skates and that's it. And I put three of them together and I don't feel like I've worked very hard to integrate the three things. And it's also too much to integrate because each object has its own properties and each one deserves actually a lot more attention. One, 
two. Whoa! You're fine? Yes. So, Kai has been treating me quite well. I first met Kai in, I think, 2017, if I'm not wrong. And she took me to different places. The place we went to most often was an art gallery in Singapore. Okay. She made a dance together with me and in this so dance, for today's she crushes my head on a pillar steps, 20 steps, times, like 50 times sideways, attempts swinging my to head the into the pillar hard. Attempts, 20 times okay and um, Actually, I should revise, it gives me um, sideways whiplash. Um, one day, <sighs> she doesn't matter how many times did it so hard and so much that my skin broke like near my throat and so there was a hole and then I became a lot less inflatable in the sense that air was leaking out of me so then Kai actually performed surgery on me she stitched me up and then over the stitches she also taped me up with sports tape because it's kind of like a cloth tape and it's kind of elastic and and I'm a sports person and when I'm injured when I'm injured I use sports tape one of the biggest challenges I face is Often feeling that I'm reaching the limits of my flexibility. My skin is not flexible at all, actually. And at my joints, I'm often being stretched. Yeah, there's been a few holes because of this. What I do is I scream when Kai stretches my skin really hard and I'm near breaking point. I just scream. I also freeze. I kind of do nothing. I don't give in because if I give in, I would break. So I just scream and then Kai hears me screaming and then she stops and then she wiggles herself around and then it's fine. And then we continue. The other challenge I face is that Kai often throws the heaviest part of me onto the ground. So the heaviest part of me is my fan, um, the part of me that's sucking air from the outside and blowing air into the inside. That's a pretty heavy part and if Kai throws me in the air. The first part of me to land will be my fan that actually caused my fan to pop out of my body a few times. It's not good. Everything has to stop and Kai has to fix me. I eat batteries. If the batteries are old, then I don't have much energy. Kai is responsible for buying new batteries. Often, before shows happen, Kai buys me new batteries because Kai is worried that I won't be able to perform up to standard if we're using old batteries. I always look forward to fresh batteries. It makes everything easier and my fan doesn't have to work that hard and I produce a nicer sound. When my fan's blowing, there's always a sound. The sound is smoother and lighter when I have new batteries. When I have old batteries, I sputter a bit. I smell pretty bad, I think, to most humans. I smell like plastic and rubber and sweat. I smell worse when Kai's been inside me. 
my hobbies are lying squished in a plastic bag and resting for long periods of time. I think the hardest part about being a dinosaur is I don't really have a life of my own. I don't know how it came to be like that, but I'm either resting all squished up in a plastic bag with no one to care about me or look at me, or I'm somehow already on display and doing a bunch of physical activities, which I'm not sure that I actually have the competence to do, but Kai just does it with my body. My existence is really connected to an attempt to do sports without having had time to practice. It really is like that, you know, I'm an internet meme and I appear on lots of YouTube videos. Most of the videos I'm in, I'm a gimmick. I'm a joke. I'm doing physical activities, like running around or jumping. The skills displayed don't have to be very difficult skills. It just has to be me doing the skills, no matter how easy the skills are. That's already worth a look, because it's me. I'm associated with sports practice at low skill levels. I mean, at the highest skill levels, like if you watch Olympic gymnastics or whatever, I'm not going to be there. I'm not there because I never practice. I'm there only for the show. It's really hard to explain. I'm there for shows that are low skill level. I'm not there when skill levels are high. I'm basically, um, I don't know, what does that make me? I'm the plebeian of elite. I'm, I'm not part of elite sports and I don't have to be part of elite sports. I'm part of the world of fun and easiness. It's not that I wanted it to be like that, it's just that when I have free time, for some reason I'm inside the plastic bag. No one takes me out to practice. I'm just repeating myself, I'm sorry. I, I need to go figure out the meaning of my life. Thank <laughs> you.